Back in the olden days, studios used to have laminated sheets showing delay times in milliseconds for various things like eighth notes, quarter notes, sixteenths, dotted this, dotted that. And that was great. You set your value on your digital delay line and you could get an eighth note delay. Now, with GarageBand, everything is basically sorted for you. So if you want a quarter note delay, it's easy. You just specify a quarter note and it will change it for whatever tempo you're at. And that's fine. But what happens if we want to tweak something a bit to get to get some nice cross rhythms going? And that's what I'm going to show you. So the next shot you'll see is of the iPad screen. And I'm going to talk over that and give you a bit of sort of info on how to get the best out of these delays. So here we are with the drums on Garage Band. I'm just going to go to Acoustic Drums. I've got a tempo, I think, set of 63. There we go. I'm going to record a basic drum beat. OK, now, because we are the first track on here, it's going to quantize everything, which is kind of what I want, because that wasn't very nice. But I've also got to check at the beginning, there was no crash symbol. So I'm just going to put one in. There we go. Oh, wrong symbol. There we go. Now, the snare drum is what I'm interested in for the purposes of this demonstration. So I'm just going to make sure that the velocity of the snare drum is basically constant. So I've just got to make sure that I've got my snare drums roughly the same. Now, what I also want to do is to separate out the snare drums I want to copy them. I also want to delete them. Now, the reason for this is because I want to have separate control over my snare drum in terms of the delay that I'm using. So I need to duplicate the drum track. There we go. I need to edit the drum track. Now, I need to put the snares on the second beat. Now, that's very important because the snares on the back beat. I need to make sure I paste it in the right place. There we go. Now I can go into track settings and I can specify an echo on the drums or delay. Now, as you can hear, that echo defaults to a quarter note. Now we want to specify something a little bit different. If I go into plugins and EQ on the snare drum, because you can see that's the second track there, I'm going to go to edit click track echo. Now it gives me the time stamp here of a quarter note. Now that's pretty useful. I can change it to whatever value I want. Now, you know, engineers of the 1980s would have just killed for this sort of technology to, to make sure that their delay lines were running properly. But nowadays we want to go back and mash things up a bit because we've got all the musical values specified and there are a lot of things there. If I go to quarter or eighth dotted, for example, and try that again, you can hear. You can get quite a good groove out of your drums with that. Now, the reason that this is a boon is that if I change the tempo, the tempo, the eighth dotted will follow that tempo. Not so back then, back in the olden days when you had to tweak your delay line to a certain number of milliseconds. Now, that's what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get rid of the track echo here. So I've got instead my audio unit extensions and I'm going to go to audio or AU delay, audio unit or delay, and then I'm going to edit that. Now here we have a slightly more sort of Spartan display, which is what you would have had back in the 1980s on your digital delay line. Now we've got the delay time this time measured in seconds. So one second, two seconds is the maximum. And then all the way down the bottom, you've got zero seconds, which of course is no delay at all. 
Now, as I scroll through, you can see the display counting up in decimals, counting up in uh, with 0.547 seconds, for example. That is 547 milliseconds. Now, obviously, that doesn't sound very good. You know, we're not really getting a nice sort of groove with that because I've just set a random value. However, if we can move to the left here, let's try 0 0.008. 0 0.084 seconds. Yeah. Now we're getting something a little bit different, a little bit sort of mashy, a bit sort of, uh, yeah, a bit off the beaten track. There's nothing wrong with it, um, except perhaps that it's quite high in the mix, that delay. And that's where you have the control over here. Dry, wet mix, zero is no delay, and 100 is only the delayed section. Well, you obviously wouldn't want that. But if I moved all the way to the left, it's just the snare on its own. Let's just try raising it slightly. Now the feedback, that is essentially, that's the, uh, the amount of, ret of uh, replays or the amount of echoes that you'll get, the number of um, hits. And it's specified as a percentage, uh, which doesn't matter. If you have it on half halfway, there's quite a lot of repeats there. Now, you've also got this other control here, which is the cutoff frequency of the echoes only. So if I turn this down quite away, that means that all of the echoes, I'll just turn the feedback up so you can hear it. Essentially, all of the echoes are like if somebody's turned the treble control down. That does allow you to get a more subtle effect, and it means that the delays don't take over so much. I'll just turn the feedback down ever so slightly and try that again. Now, if I switch my delay time even further down, it's almost like a reverb now. You've got such a quick delay that it's almost like the snare is being played in a, in a present room. Now, if I click done and go back to my mix, I can now turn the snare down slightly so that it f fits in with the other drums a little bit better. <laughs> now, of course, yeah, this isn't to everyone's taste, but it's the principle here, and it's the fact that you really can tweak stuff. Now, in terms of my mix, you can see that I've got my kick drum and uh, hi-hats on this track, on the top track here. Now, a very useful and quite a sort of basic way of editing this, or mixing it rather, is that your bass drum is now on the bass control and the hi-hats are on the treble. It's a very convenient way of getting a mix out of your drums now. Because the snare is on a separate track, I can tweak the treble and the bass to my heart's content to get more or less kick drum or indeed hi-hat. <laughs> now, of course, that snare drum, I could put it on the, the reverb as well. Now, I could go in to my um, audio unit, so let's get rid of Effect EQ, that's fine, it's just something that comes with the kit. Let's just try that. Let's try putting this through a phaser, for example. Now, what you can also do is, if we duplicate this track, um, put it there and then get rid of all the effects. We could actually copy the snare drum and then put it also on this track. So 
so that you don't lose the initial impact of that snare drum. And this time you've got snare drum direct and snare drum affected. Now that is like, um, it's a sort of a sixth of a beat, which would be a 24th note um, or a triplet uh, 16th. Except it isn't, it's ever so slightly off in time. Now that we like because suddenly you've given that kit a little bit of an edge rhythmically. It's not absolutely down the beaten track. Now, of course, you can play this to your heart's content, but we've got three tracks now on our drums. We need to be a little bit careful uh, that we don't use up lots and lots of tracks, hence the kick drum and the hi-hat being sort of mixable via the EQ section. But I'm sure you'll agree that you can get some pretty mad sounds out of this and you don't have to go with the Apple delay lines or the Apple delay times that they give you. And that's just pure Apple. They just go, well, there you go. Tweak it to what you want. <laughs> 